So, okay. Um, anyone who's used streams and knows, knows that it's in the ads. Um, the, uh, uh, if you're not familiar with basically how it works, the short, the short version is the streams model in, in Node is essentially push. You have, you know, the data provider, data consumer. The data provider is basically just shoving data at the, uh, uh, at the consumers, right? Uh, there, is a, there is some notion of the back pressure. Um, the state model is involved is, is rather complicated, uh, and we can't separate the state model from the you know, the state from the implementation. Um, there's uh, three versions of streams that are all kind of overlapping each other uh, in, uh, in the API. There's a lot of corrupt that is that has come into this. There's not only the three versions at the JavaScript level. There's also at the native level this stream-based class that underlies stuff, and there's you know, complexities in terms of how it works. Uh, and the data flow that goes back and forth, uh, back and forth there. Uh, there's the streams pipe method, right? We pass uh, and you know, uh, cascade data down for a series of, uh, of streams, transforms, right? Uh, that doesn't work at the native layer. Uh, I know Anne has been, you know, just looking at that a little bit to see if we can get a, a native pipe going to, to make data flow even, uh, uh, make it even more efficient, but. It's just over the years, just been um, the the streams API has just gotten corruptier, right, and, and and harder to work with. So was it two years ago, two interactions ago? Yeah, I'd be up where it started. Yeah, um, uh, uh, a few of us got together and yeah, uh, uh, at lunch at at interactive two years ago in Vancouver. We started kicking around these idea for this new streams API. Um, and somebody asked, well, what are we going to call it? And somebody suggested Bob. So it's it's Bob Streams API. <laughs> um, Jeremiah has been uh, the one primarily pushing it forward because the rest of us that were talking about it um, uh, just got distracted. He was the only one that I, you know, it, it, instead of working on it. He's done a fantastic bit of work. Um, but reaching a point now where in order to move it forward, we need to expand it, and those of us that we're talking about it actually need to help. Um, and then if anyone else wants to um, uh, uh, help out with it, then I just want to kind of give a basic idea of how it works. So, you ready to go? Not really. Not really, so um, I'm going to keep talking to Dan. Sure. Like the presentation <laughs> that I had modified, like didn't modify it. Um, okay. Uh, so, the, the way that you know, Jeremy, Jeremy can go into the details. The difference is uh, with with uh, with Bob is that it's uh, uh, entirely full based model, uh, not not a push. Uh, you have a sink and a source. Uh, the source is providing the data, but the sink has to pull, right? It has to say when it's ready. Uh, and, it, and and the state model is greatly simplified. That you know you only have the one read. Right, and if you read, there's no data available. It'll tell you right away. If there's an error reading, it'll tell you right away. Uh, there, there's very few um, uh, state transitions uh, as you are actually reading the data. Another uh, part of it is it emphasizes uh, being uh, memory stable. So rather than the rather than the source allocating memory and then pushing it, and then the, uh, the, the, the receiver having to copy data. Right, or notify of this uh, source when it's done. The puller would allocate the, the, the storage port, uh, and the uh, the source would basically write into that storage. Right. So the intent is to hopefully reduce the number of mem copies that actually need to happen. I can't get the other microphones to work, so I guess I'm just going to go over like um, this. So uh, James is good. I kind of given an intro, and this is kind of just the. Um, um, this is slides that I modified from Vancouver last time. Oh, I'm going to go over those. Yeah, we share this um, on the stream. Yep. I don't know how. You just log into the super. Zoom room where? Do you, you stop Zoom? You go to each issue number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zoom what, 171 on the subject code. I think that's easiest. Then you click on the link. Sorry. 
So it's like one time. Continue. There we go. She has to be. She's everything. Cool. Um, so yeah, uh, James kind of like went over things a little bit. Um, so this is kind of a modified presentation from last time. That's because um, somewhat limited uh, progress has been made since then, but it's still very interesting and it's something that we can still continue to um, discuss regardless of that. Um, uh, so I'm going to go over like the slides that I do have, um, perhaps a little bit more quickly than last time. Um, I think we have a little bit more time this time, but um, we'll try to discuss some things around them. So uh, Bob, yeah, we went over why it's called that and uh, future questions with streams or stream-like things. Um, so I have some stuff here. There's kind of like why I think James said a little bit about that. And I have a little bit of a layout of tools and API and status and stuff to discuss. Um, so why reinvent streams? Okay. Um, we might know why here, but the user experience is really bad. <laughs> um, people run into problems all the time. We hear about it all the time. I don't think this is a surprise to very many of us at this point. Um, and stream performance is we knew that too. Um, so um, I have some goals that I'm going to go over. And um, just like last time, there's like some terms. Um, so things that, that uh, I'm calling a consumer or sync is the API endpoint where data goes to. And a producer or the source is the API um, end where the data comes from. And the protocol is a combination. Um, so the, the goal of this um, effort is to make um, a protocol, really, um, that's pull-based, that is uh, binary only, so that we don't need to worry about object mode. Where's Jake? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, the stateless, um, as much as we can get to, so um, any state is passed in protocol. We don't need this wild state machine um, that is as one-to-one -one as possible, so there's no event bidders, um, because those also Cause wild multiplexing issues and it's very important. Um, that is uh, also timing agnostic as much as we can, also as much as we can get it, so that um, we don't need to worry about next sticks and events like we currently do. Um, no buffer in the protocol, so uh, we would like the underlying classes to not have um, buffering logic, and any buffering that is done uh, should be done in the components where it actually needs to be done rather than all the time. And also. Um, the error should be able to be in line and sort of like ends or ends of files um, should also be, be able to be an inline message. Um, so I have a computer current proposed API, and unfortunately, it is uh, late in the day, and I'm still going to show you code, which I regret, but that's what it is. Um, so the sync API of this um, essentially looks like this. Um, thankfully, it's very, rather simple code. Um, there's a method to kind of bind things together, the sync, the sync to the source, so that you get the protocol. And then um, on the sync, which is the thing that is going to um, be receiving the data, um, you have a next method, which is what the source is going to call. Um, and that can be filled out a bit more. So this actually um, you know, more or less kind of like works. Um, bind the source together. Um, and then in your next, where you get the data, um, you would be, once you are done receiving and processing data, you are going to pull it again, because these are pull-based streams. Um, so you request the data always. Um, and uh, the source API is kind of like this. So you have the two methods that are the um, kind of other side equivalents. You have find sync and pull, <coughs> which is called. And that can be filled out to um, once you get the data, send that back to the sync with next. And um, in practice, uh, obviously, there's a bit more filler, but that's really um, a lot to the protocol. So a, a bare pass through um, can be, be um, constructed just as this. This uh, works as a bare pass through um, completely. There's no extra code needed, and it fits on the server, which is pretty nice. I think. Um, so composing these things into something that you can actually like uh, stream data through um, is kind of like not the most perfectly pleasant right now. A helper would be appreciated or like as in writing a helper um, is probably going to be the um, ideal thing to do. Um, 
or to just change the binding mechanism. I left it rough like that because um, that is kind of it, it, at, at, it at its most uh, simplest and raw um, for discussion. And uh, so if you want to put a transform in between, you basically um, you have your sink bind to a source, which would be, um, so you have your transform bind to your uh, source, and then your uh, sink would then bind to that transform. And uh, the way the way um, most of it is set up right now um, is so that it would kind of like automatically start. There's some stuff I basically wrote like this very minimal thing on like what we may want to add to that or extensions. I'm not sure if that's in these slides, but um, in cases where you have network sockets, it's nice to be able to start that explicitly and not have it automatically start. Um, so all this is, is found on my, in my in repos um, under fishr 23 slash Bob, it links to everything. Um, and if you go to slash diagrams, you can find these diagrams. So this shows you the entire flow um, where there is no error. Um, so I don't have a pointer or anything, but um, you, uh, you start um, down where the bind, et cetera, kind of thing is here, that's where your setup is. And then you go and you pull up up the stream. So in this case, you may, from a network socket or something, pull from a compression transform. That is going to pull from, say, a file source. And then um, once your file source um, has that data, it's going to send that back down. And in a transform or something, you may have it need to do some buffering. So it may do that multiple times. And then um, you're going to get down to the bottom, and it's going to repeat as many times as necessary. And when that's done, you will get a message there to find that um, everything completed. Or you got an error, in which case the error flow looks very similar. The error could be emitted anywhere. It bubbles up so that you can close anything above it. And then it comes back down so that you can close anything that was um, below it. And also the thing that it emitted here. Um, so I don't know if that makes sense, but we can go over it again um, hopefully discuss it. Um, the current status is I have uh, some various modules published. They're published at NPM. There's GitHub sources for these things. Um, Bob status, FS source, FS sync, Zlib transform. Um, they do work. And then there's socket, which kind of attempts to make a network socket out of this. Uh, requests with that socket work, but the server um, the server looks, leaks memory because I'm not a very good CC plus programmer. Um, <laughs> and I have limited time to spend on this. Um, there's some things on API performance if someone wants to know them that doesn't already, but um, this is much cheaper to do than using current streams, and um, maybe we can discuss that. Any questions on basic API design? Any questions on the benefits or concerns? <coughs> Uh, will we have four streams? And how do you want to kind of support the new API um, in the existing like net or HTTP? Um, and does it have any overlap with the promises friendly API for event emitter and streams? So I kind of left that section out of slides, but the plan is to um, change all of the um, undersides of node basically so that streams internally would use this um, because uh, streams is mappable um, on top of this including all the event stuff as far as I can tell. So the, the, the path for introducing this is basically just to add it as a separate new streams implementation right in parallel to what's there. The existing streams API would continue to exist untouched right but there would be a map layer on top of this that would give a, you know, a legacy streams mapping on top of Bob, right? Yeah, the idea was to um, do this in a way that where streams could be implemented on top of it so that we could then um, prototype this essentially also in Node by switching out the internals to use this. And then once we were happy with how that works, then we could um, publicize it and not have to go through. 
one of the other nice things about this is that the same protocol, I mean, this, so this is essentially just a protocol um, and it works both at the C++ and JavaScript using the same model. Um, yeah, so we don't have two completely different API and streams models operating at those two layers. I may have missed it because I just came in, but outside the question was, how does this relate to some existing and ongoing standardization efforts on screen? Right, yeah. So one of the other intents of this um, was to give a, a new low-level stream primitive upon which something like uh, WebWG streams could be built. Uh, right now, uh, the existing streams in Node, if we tried to do the WebWG implementation on top of that, uh, the performance would be rather bad, and, there's, and the models don't quite fit. Uh, with this, um, we sh it should be rather straightforward to build what WG streams in that promise space model on top of this uh, fairly trivial. Okay. I guess so. Then one question would be: Does this need to be exposed? So if you put this in and you built the existing the existing stream API on top of it, then you brought w, the what WG streams in three down two instead of three. Does that make any sense, or? Yeah, um, with, yeah, so we have to decide whether it makes sense to expose this directly. Yes, um, the idea is that we would potentially eventually expose it because it would be much cheaper to do and it is much simpler than either. Um, and it is much more, well, yeah, cheaper to do. It is much more performant than what we do streams for our streams. Um, what we do streams can be built on top of it without any real problem, what we do streams are push based when you are in the stream, but the actual like endpoints of consuming something or giving data somewhere are actually pull based, so that interaction is fine with this. Um, also, it's a lot easier to build push based streams on top of pull based streams. Um, all you do is have something that immediately grabs the data and pushes it along, rather, rather than the opposite way, if you try to build pull based streams on top of push based streams. Um, you just have to buffer a ton of data all the time. Um, so this is probably just exposing my ignorance about how streams work, but um, if you don't have any buffering and it's full based entirely, what happens when the source is around? So uh, this is this is intended to reduce buffering as much as possible. There, you know, when we do have a source which is a fire hose, then it will have to buffer. Um, what we what we what the goal is is right now streams requires buffering at every layer, like every writable and every readable has this buffering. We want to isolate the buffering where it you know only when it where it's absolutely needed. Um, there are some, unfortunately, the, a lot of the underlying protocols now are giving us options for providing um, the flow control in the protocol, HP2 and, and Quick, for instance. We can actually, if we're not reading, we can tell the sender stop, right? Some of the other, uh, some of the, the, the other protocols just will have to buffer inside of that, that one layer. So it's whatever implementation of the source is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Something will always be stuck buffering somewhere if you aren't in your programming because you're operating system. Um, but the goal is to try to avoid doing that certainly at every step along the way, which is kind of what currently happens. Um, another thing that's not in here that I'd like to mention um, is kind of like the libbv layer of things. Um, so in, in my socket work, um, this is also implemented in uh, uh, C++ and should be in implementable in C also. Um, so along uh, at the system level, a lot of the uh, calls you're going to make to network IO um, are going to end up one way or other being uh, like a request from, from the operating system, um, which kind of maps a lot better to place things than uh, push based streams do. And um, Libby currently exposes push based streams, but could exposed full day streams potentially um, in a way that made more sense. So that is um, kind of like a thing that I can look at too. And one thing we haven't touched on, so the current streams API um, has both the readable and writable interfaces, right? And those are two very distinct things. With this, um, there's only one protocol that works for both. 
right? So even on the writable side, what you're what you're uh, and, and implementing is a uh, uh, is a source, right? And then you will provide, you know, rather than pushing data into it, you're you're essentially just waiting for whatever your destination to pull data out. So, so it'll be a slightly different model. Uh, um, well, not a slightly, very different model than what, uh, what we have now with this pushing stuff in, but we will be able to support that writable side as well. So any, any other questions in terms of the basic model? Um, in terms of what's needed from here um, is, is just more validation of the, of, of the model. Um, you know, this is this is something. You know, it's like you know, I, I'm going to be committing to you know, take a look uh, again at it, what Jeremiah has done. Uh, he's been working on this for two years, and you know, you know, needs some uh, needs some help. If anybody is interested in help pushing this forward, uh, the I would imagine the next step is actually getting land. You know, next significant step is actually landing some experimental support in, in, in core for this. The next step is getting some sort of conversion between this and streams. Yeah. So, so remember, yeah, yeah, that is required to do the stuff that you just said. <laughs> um, I just wonder, like, help us separate the project. Um, is it time or reasonable to move that project under the Node.js org now? Is uh, is something that's is more easily discoverable and having other people get involved? I could. I'm I'm not really convinced how much that matters currently. So, so yeah, um, the the streams, the existing streams API is rather complicated. Doing that mapping is going to require somebody that you know that has a good understanding of, of, of streams. Yeah. Uh, but you know, if you want to get involved in, in um, uh, you know, that is the, definitely something that we can we can do. But I, I would love to see this actually you know, get into core. Fairly, fairly quickly, and it's something we can introduce, we, and we should be able to introduce it, introduce it in the minor. Um, yeah, I mean, so uh, I just want to add one quick thing. Once we have the transform layer, one thing that would be really, really nice to check is that if this mechanism is uh, more performant than our current uh, stream based approach. I mean, if you like stream based or know what stream based even is. It's horrible. And, uh, you know, uh, basically, if we, can, if we can switch from that model to this by providing better performance with the transform layer um, on streams, that would be a simply promising to file of maintenance overall. So, yeah, that would be very, 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 very good. Fortunately, I have no time. I have seen this. I have. I am not a bit time back crunching. So I'm sorry. Just. Uh, you called a, me, so I had to <laughs> something. There's a bunch of example in code in the um, socket uh, that I was working on um, in TCP socket that's implemented with this. Um, that transforms also from C++ to JavaScript and. I mean, that's a decent amount of code, um, especially because of how an API works. But the overall pattern, once once you uh, got it across the barrier of needing to talk to JavaScript and SQL Plus, is pretty much the same. Um, so there's not some uh, wildly different layer that's kind of like needed in case of stream base. Yeah, and a couple other things um, I'm going to mention since uh, James point out um, places to help out. So there's other things um, I probably could list somewhere that um, could still use like prototyping. Like um, if you do want events with this, like for some reason you want to see when data is going to the pipe or something, the pipe as it were figuratively, um, putting like a transform in that emits events off of it in a useful way should be possible. Even if you want to like listen to errors or something for some reason that way. Um, uh, another thing is, okay, this isn't promise based. It's not really inherently callback based either. It's kind of just um, like objects that talk to each other, that call each other's methods. Um, but consuming a pull based thing with a async iterator um, also maps very well because async iterators are essentially 
full mechanism as it is. Um, on that note, the reason why it isn't sort of like async await based is because, or async iterator sort of based, is because there's not really a way to pass buffers up from the, um, the consumer to the, the thing that is um, giving you data, and that is for memory copy reduction reasons that we want that. Yeah, the one thing that I will see that the current API that's just you know basically pulling the next. Um, there is one limitation there, you know, that we have with Quick, for instance, is that we might also need a, a, an, an ACK after that because with Quick we have to hold on to the buffer data until it's explicitly acknowledged or we have to write it again. So as far as the API is concerned, we might need to add one additional bit on there, but. Um. Benjamin also, I don't know if you see it, told me to look at uh, Denos uh, streaming kind of stuff recently. Um, the one thing it has that this doesn't really inherently have is like seeking, although I guess you could probably like implement a light thing before all your other pipeline that does some kind of like, you know, continue until we get to this point. Or your source could just do that. So yeah, um, so along those lines, you know, just you know, validation of the API, right? You know, just you know, think through the model, how it works, how how that would go, and if there if if for some reason this this uh, current model just doesn't work for a particular case, we can start with that. Yeah, we just need to create a repo that we can start having discussions on, um, or, you know, so we can move the new pop into. The Any other questions, comments? You mentioned high performance improvements. Do you, do you have numbers on like how much faster TCP gets with this implementation than, than master? Um, if there's numbers about that, they're in my repo and I don't quite remember. I know that for like doing like file reads and stuff, um, even in bad cases, you get like a 30% decrease in the amount of CPU you're using. Um, and for, for good cases, like it's several times better. So um, like a bad case is like, um, you're, is, I believe was done with the Zeno transform and it still takes like 30% 30, 30 less CPU. And just like doing a file copy, a streaming file copy is, is about any time decrease in the amount of CPU that's taken. And with the, the current stream-based model, um, you know, just anecdotally, with quick, I don't have a, a precise numbers on it, but with the current stream-based, when, when you write data to the stream, uh, to the writable uh, on the JavaScript side, uh, and it passes that through to the C++ side, you can't write another chunk until that callback is, is invoked, right? And because of the way I have to buffer the data for, for quick, um, um, and, and to, to get the, the, the maximum throughput, I, I essentially have to do a mem copy on every write uh, there, and then call you know, both the callback right away, so I don't have to sit there and wait for the, the data to be acknowledged, or you know, um, which will free it. Right? Um, this would completely eliminate that, uh, the need to mem copy at any point, uh, all the way down to the actual write, uh, which you know, just that alone will have a uh, significant performance improvement. So just. Uh, even though we don't have numbers, just looking at the model, well, we can see that there's some improvements. As long as you don't need to bother with saying that you're trying to do Thank you for dealing with my sleepiness. I blame James for dragging me for this. <laughs> okay, um, as far as I know, that's the agenda. Um, yeah, so thank you all. Well, I would just like to do a quick wrap up of the last few days. We have lost a bunch of people along the way. I don't know where they all end up. Uh, it's, uh, it has been a fantastic experience, I think, for everybody. And uh, I will open an issue to receive, to collect feedback um, on the repo uh, so that we can improve for next time. So things that have worked, things that didn't work, and things that we might, we might do better next time. I've seen that a bunch of people would like to have name tags, which is a fantastic thing, because it means that more people that doesn't know each other are coming to these events. So 
Um, I will put that into the list of things that we have to do for the next time. Name tags. Great. Um, so we're going to do that. That seems a very simple thing to do. Thank you. Uh, I also would like to uh, thank uh, Jory, which is she's not here, I don't know, but thank you, Jory, uh, for picking up a lot of work and also to Manil that picked up a lot of work that, um, uh, you know, uh, I, I was not alone, there was a big team working on this. Also, Tracy Lee from uh, Zizot Lab uh, helped a lot. And Eva as well. You've seen Eva, she's been fantastic helping both with the logistics, with the rooms and everything. It's been great. So I would also say thank you all of you for coming. And that's it.